Hello, I'm Dr. Scott Wadier. And I'm Tommy Welling, and you're listening to the Fasting for Life podcast. This podcast is about using fasting as a tool to regain your health, achieve ultimate wellness, and live the life you truly deserve. Each episode is a short conversation on a single topic with immediate actionable steps. We cover everything from fat loss and health and wellness to the science of lifestyle design. We started Fasting for Life because of how fasting has transformed our lives, and we hope to share the tools that we have learned along the way. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Fasting for Life podcast. My name is Dr. Scott Wadier, and I am here, as always, with my good friend and colleague, Tommy Welling. Good afternoon to you, sir. Hey, Scott. How are you? Rock and roll, my friend. Uh, we're going to be jumping into some of the listener questions today and do a little Q&A episode. Um, right. Excited because there's some good conversation points in here from starter to intermediate to beginner, uh, excuse me, from beginner to intermediate to um, advanced fasting techniques. So yeah. I think it's going to be a great conversation uh, and excited to have it. Yeah, thank you guys for uh, for submitting your questions. Please keep doing that. We love to keep this conversational and um, love to see where you know where people are are struggling and what we can do to to strategize and kind of get past that point. Yeah, and it comes uh, through ebbs and waves too, uh, ebbs and flows. There, there'll be times where I can't keep up with the inbox, and then there'll be times where it's kind of quiet, and then right. there'll be times <laughs> where it's like, oh, okay, there's not enough hours in a day to answer all these questions. Right. Uh, but there's definitely some good ones in here. Uh, and we just want to keep delivering content to you that is actionable. So one of the biggest, uh, coolest pieces of feedback that we get from y'all is that um, it's bite size, it's short, it's hopefully to the point. If, if Tommy and I don't go off bantering in certain directions, some episodes, um, sometimes there's research, but there's always a couple of takeaway things that you can do. So if you're new to the podcast, thank you for joining us. Please, uh, I want to say subscribe, drop a five star rating and a review because Mm -hmm. we prefer those. Uh, But it's now, I guess the terminology is now called follow. Um, Because if you're subscribing, it actually means you're paying for the podcast. Apparently, Apple's changed the rules, but we are here. You don't have to worry about that. So drop us. uh, I guess it's a go and follow. That's a little bookmark symbol uh, on wherever you get your podcast apps. Uh, Mm -hmm. Drops a review. Like we said, we prefer the five-star kind um, and appreciate the new listeners as well as the old school OGs that have been with us since the beginning. We are on episode, we're in the 80s somewhere, just rocking and rolling. I uh, cannot believe uh, that it has had this amount of traction, you know, when we started this back in the day. So it's what we want. Keep it conversational. Keep submitting your questions and appreciate you guys listening. Again, if you're new, go to the website. You can check us out, thefastingforlife.com. You can download our free resources. We just built out a new resource page while well, Tommy did. We've got some new stuff coming. The insulin assessment is up there. We've got the fast start guide, which will help you get fasting into your day-to-day life quicker. So go ahead, check it out. And uh, Tommy, let's start with uh, one of the listeners' questions um, that came in. And what had happened was post-breaking the fast and ingesting a balanced meal, right? So we always talk about getting some good fat, some lean protein, some healthy starchy veggies, some natural carbs. We mm-hmm. do not subscribe to, you know, any one specific type of eating because we want this to be sustainable long term for everybody. Right. Um, don't start a program if you can't see yourself doing it forever because then that means you're just going to give back all the hard work and results that you work so hard to get. So, mm-hmm. when we're talking about food and breaking a fast, sometimes people will comment and this question came in saying, "Hey, after I broke my fast, this is what I ate. I'll spare the details. It was a balanced plate." Uh, but I felt really tired and sluggish. What do I do? Yeah. Yeah. I got a couple of considerations here. And, um, d- you know, depending on, on how long of a fast you were in coming into that meal, uh, that can, that can uh, affect how you feel afterwards. Because if you're already in a state of ketosis, and then let's say you have um, some significant carbohydrates or a larger meal, um, you know, to, to actually break that fast, then that's going to require a greater insulin response. It's going to, um, attribute to the, uh, contribute to the, the, the feelings of tiredness, uh, afterwards as well. Yeah. And the second thing, which is, um, it was funny because some of the, this was in the, uh, fasting for life community group where I originally saw the question and then it was emailed into us as well. Um, where 
some of the people had chimed up and said, well, I just, I do jumping jacks at my workstation or I, I go for a walk or I do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. So I went in and I said, well, try one teaspoon of sea or Himalayan salt in about 15 to 30 ounces of water and boom, it'll kick you right out of it. And then a couple of days later, I noticed um, that the response was it absolutely worked. So nice. she chose the salt trick. So sometimes just doing um, a little bit of uh, helping with the electrolyte balance, getting some sea salt or Himalayan salt, one teaspoon and about 15 to 30 ounces of water can also help kick you out of that. Yeah. And uh, lo and behold, it works. So there is a great um, question and consideration that we hear often. And thank you for the question, Debbie. Um, moving into a, another food water related question we get is uh, I am consuming the recommended ounces of water that you guys recommend. So we really want to shoot for 90 ounces minimum mm -hmm. on those, especially on those longer fasting days outside, you know, anything in the 20, 22, 24 hour plus range. Yeah. Um, 90 ounces to hundred. I, I, I feel better when I get 90 ounces in by about midday and then I'll sip on, on one the rest of the day. But right. this person I mentioned, I, I finally up my water feeling great. They've lost a bunch of weight. I think they're down 15 or 20 pounds, but water seems to increase my hunger. Mm, goes, okay. yeah. Any thoughts, any concerns? What do I do? Yeah. And you know, that that's one that comes up uh, every once in a while. Um, water can, uh, especially if you're not really used to drinking that much water, um, it can kind of, you know, have, have some unintended, uh, effects like increased hunger. Um, also we, we get some reports of like, oh, it, it seems to kick up my acid reflux a little bit more too. Um, and so one thing I, I really like to do, um, especially on the longer fast is just drop a few drops of like uh, a trace mineral supplement in there. Um, kind of gives it this, this more like flat taste. Um, and it, it's, it's not sodium, it's mostly magnesium and a few other, uh, minerals in there. And, mm -hmm. and that can really help, um, just stave off those, those feelings of additional hunger with, uh, with larger quantities of water. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely electrolytes. So I love the concentrates brand. We're, we're not paid by them, but if they're listening, feel free to reach out the concentrates brand of trace yeah, minerals. Mm -hmm. Um, it, uh, I'm so glad that they re reworked their formulation uh, because the old formula, my, my, it, it did not fare well in my household outside of me who could just stomach it and put it down. Uh, yeah. Uh, but the new, uh, more buffered version, uh, they've been around forever. Great company. I think uh, on Amazon, it's like $20 and you get a, a big bottle, an eight ounce bottle that lasts a long time. It's like one yeah. teaspoon, I think is the dose anywhere between 30 to excuse me, 30 to 40 drops, depending on, on, um, uh, on when you've purchased it. And that is absolutely, I start on the days I know that I'm going to be going, uh, doing, pushing the window, maybe doing a 30 hour fast going from lunch the day before to dinner that day. I will do this just in the morning as a proactive thing, mm -hmm. um, as part of the normal routine. And, I've noticed that it's also very helpful for me coming out of a longer fast when I break with, let's say a dinner in the evening and it's a larger meal the yeah. next morning, adding these in will just help with the craving. So specifically back to this person's question, um, uh, in Tommy, I don't remember the person's name. I didn't write it down or I can't read my handwriting here, but <laughs> if you're noticing hunger increasing with water intake, uh, yeah, Try the trace minerals, the constant trace minerals, and let us know. But that should be a good fix. Or yeah. Yeah. Um, one other consideration would be uh, try to space your water out, or maybe you're just drinking too much water for your body at that time. Yeah, that's that's true too. And um, if you're drinking cold water, try try it a little bit warmer because just the temperature of the water can affect um, those those feelings of hunger that come along with it. The colder the right. water is, the more the more I, I feel hungry for sure. Yeah, those are uh, obviously um, anecdotal, right? So try it out. Let us know. Give us some feedback. And then a follow-up question that is can sometimes be related to water and electrolytes and hydration, uh, but most likely inflammation. This question came in, um, and it had to do with tension in the wrists. And mm -hmm. my radar went off where this most likely is in an inflammation or a fluid retention type situation. So uh, this came in from Gwen. Uh, appreciate the question. Gwen, uh, can fasting help with tensions in the wrist? I'm currently not able to play my harp or my dulcimer. 
apologies on the pronunciation because I don't know what that is. For more than a few minutes at a time before my wrists tell me to stop, I've also nearly quit crocheting and knitting. I want more music and crafts in my life. So, um, yes, we've done episodes specifically talking about fasting and inflammation. Uh, the most common thing that we hear that's reported back to us and what we've seen in the research that you and I have looked at, Tommy, is that it can indeed decrease inflammatory blood markers or inflammatory cytokines in your body. Mm -hmm. So um, you should absolutely see an improvement in these. Now, there are some additional considerations here, um, you know, in terms of overall health, medications, uh, you know, things that you might want to consider t speaking to your doctor about, or if, if you know you have an underlying like uh, autoimmune issue like rheumatoid arthritis, uh, you know, let them know that you are doing fasting, but we do have dozens of people reporting back and some research out there to show that even with those more advanced conditions that you will see a reduction in tension, uh, or excuse me, reduction in inflammation, which is usually the underlying cause of the tension. The other one, Tommy, is the conversation we just had about hydration, electrolytes, and salt. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. And it has to do with those things. Like you're, you're going to feel more of those inflammatory markers. You're going to feel more of those things when you're in a state of, let's say dehydration, or if you even have undue stress or, um, you know, you're, you're, you're sleep deprived at that point. But, you know, then, then there's also uh, the matter of how long are you fasting for? Because as we get into those longer fasts going 24 mm -hmm. hours plus, we start to tap into uh, the autophagy side of things um, on right. the fasting scale. So some of those longer fasts can actually really kick in the autophagy mechanisms within the body. So, so um, you know, integrating some longer fasts into your weekly schedules might be a, a really good idea to kind of kick it up a notch um, for those anti-inflammatory um, pathways. Yeah, that's a great point. I hadn't even thought about that until you just said it. So yeah, if you're if you're not seeing the decrease in inflammation, at, let's say you're doing a 16-8 and you're new to fasting and you're intermittent fasting, um, autophagy is typically kicks in around that 17 to 18 hour mark. So you might not even be at the point where you're starting that process. Right. And then, you know, for instance, you get to 24 hours, you're going to be talking about increased BDNF, which is the brain derived nootropic factor, which is you know, for cognition and brain fog reduction and all those different types of things, stem yeah. intestinal stem cell regeneration at 24 hours. And then at, like you said, as you get up through the 30 to 36, where you're really getting uh, decreased insulin uh, levels that you haven't had in a long time, then you're going to start to see so, some, some really cool things take place physiologically and everybody's a little bit different. So these are just, you know, um, approximate windows based on some of the research and, yeah. It's, uh, so if you are, Tommy, great point. If you are in those earlier stages, maybe pushing the window um, by an hour or two over the course of a few days. So if you've been doing 18, 16, go to 18, go to 20, and you should start to see uh, some improvement as well. So really good point there. Yeah. Um, we have two more questions for today. Uh, one is about protein. And then we have one question about the doing longer fast on a repeated schedule. And this is a question we get that has a lot of different nuance to it. So I'm sure we've talked about this before. And there's something that we've, uh, Tommy, I think you came up with the name is called fast cycling. So if you've been part of our continuity group, or you've been in one of our challenges, this is where we talk about using different fasting windows, which is a change of framework than when you and I started, which was really just start with a one meal a day type framework, right? Mm -hmm. So fast cycling is using these varied windows based on, I'm going to put air quotes on this. This is an audio medium, but air quotes and aggressiveness to how much weight you want to lose or mm -hmm. your intention behind fasting, which kind of leads to all of these different nuanced conversations. So yeah. for this question, it was very specifically, and I'll let you unpack this here, Tommy, is um, she had been part of the challenge and had gotten great results. So right now down 32 pounds and just about six, let me look here real quick. So about six, uh, going on seven weeks and, uh, down 32 pounds. Nice. And just absolutely, actually, she even says, Tally here says, holy crap, you guys are great. Thank you for your help and support. <laughs> and I always say, well, we're going to throw that right back to you, Tally, because you did all the hard work, right? You showed up and put the work in, but yep. Um, she had come off, you know, this, this 
really great results. And she almost was kind of like tentatively like, okay, should I be continue to be doing these longer fasts? Yeah. And what's, what's like, or do I need to kind of take a break week? So to speak. Yeah. Yeah, Like, how do you, how do you kind of think through that? How do you, how do you plan um, when, when you're seeing results? And and sometimes that can be surprising, especially if you're coming from the eat less, move more low and slow and, and you're not really used to seeing results. Like it can almost be a surprise to, to a lot of folks in the challenge. Like, oh my gosh, like this is, this is really working. And um, yeah. So, so, so where do we go from there? So, um, you know, fast cycling, like you alluded to is, is us, you know, uh, bringing in some variation into our fasting schedules, you know, like um, a lot of people start with us, like you said, um, on the fast start guide, you're going to, you're going to see how to use one meal a day fasting. Um, which is, which is great. And, uh, you know, before I came to fasting, what I heard most people talking about was, was usually like a 16, eight type of schedule, right. but it, as, essentially that that's time for like lunch and dinner, probably. Um, it's almost like just skipping breakfast and you, you kind of end and, up with a yeah, skipping breakfast and a snack and you're there. Sure. And, and you kind of, you kind of end up with a 16, eight and, and that's great. And it's, it's better than kind of just uh, all day willy nilly, you know, eating um, with, with, with right. no, like boundaries set. Um, so it's, it's great. And it's going to be an improvement for, for insulin. Um, but it's, it's not necessarily what everyone needs to, to drop old weight, to tap into some of those old fat stores. Sometimes we're going to have to push the window a little bit and we're going to have to use some, some varied schedules, um, that kind of get at different, at different things. And like what we just talked about with the autophagy, um, getting some of those benefits, um, and, and, some of the most benefit that start to come in with some of those longer fasts, putting those into the mix too. Um, so, you know, so for her, for actually um, repeating some longer fasts and should she do it, it, it sounds like to me for her, um, she's found what's working and there's really not a big reason to, to stop doing what's working at that point. Yeah. Let me put a couple of parameters there. Um, one thing I left out was she was at a plateau prior to doing the last challenge. Mm. Um, and this, no, this is not, and we have another one coming up. I don't even know the date yet, Tommy. We're, we're getting close to announcing that. Yeah. Um, uh, it may and, be in the show notes here. Yeah. Oh, so September 14th, no, excuse me, September 8th. Correct. Okay. Yeah. September 8th. Uh-huh. Okay. Real, real life, real life here. It, you, you guys are getting a peek behind the curtain. We set the date and then I literally in real time forgot September 8th. <sighs> Um, is the next challenge coming up. And she had mentioned that she was at a plateau prior to doing the one that we did back, uh, back in June. And um, to your point of whether or not to continue, here are some things that I'll mention. If your energy is good and you're sleeping well and you're, you don't have a lot of hunger cravings and you're not hungry mm-hmm. all the time, and you're still seeing the weight go down, and you've got energy and vitality, and I would continue to do what's working until your body gives you a signal that it's time to make a change. So as long as you're eating good nutrient-dense foods during your fasting, uh, your feeding windows, you're staying hydrated, and all of those things are in alignment, then yeah, absolutely keep riding riding the the fat loss train, right? Right. Right Um, And continue to use those different longer fasts. So we're talking about, you know, OMAD or put doing a 30 or 36 hour fast once a week or doing a 48 hour fast once a week. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Now, if you're starting to feel your cravings come up or your sleep's being disturbed, or you're noticing you're a little more edgy or you're hungrier, or you're not feeling satisfied with the foods and you are eating clean, nutrient dense foods, then it might be time to, you know, do a reverse fast or, or take a break and open up your window for 10 or 14 days Sure. And, and just kind of play around with those different windows, but I didn't want to leave that consideration out, but um, yeah, yeah it's, it's a great, it's one of the things that we talk a lot about during challenge week. And then also um, in the continuity group. So if you want, or you've been waiting or you're on the wait list for the challenge, or you don't even know what a challenge is, you can go to the show notes. Uh, it'll bring you to the page where you can get all of the dates, information and details. So yeah. one last question, Tommy, um, before we wrap up today's episode is, the question about getting enough protein during a one hour or two hour eating window. Mm-hmm. And the question came in from Natalie and she says, I've been doing, uh, just found the podcast. Thank you for listening. She's currently on episode 18. I appreciate your grace. We were new back then, still trying to figure it out. 
Um, been doing 16, eight for about three weeks. She's not a tracker, but she's been consistently seeing results, interested in doing longer fasts, uh, after listening to the podcast, but hesitant because she won't get her protein needs met with one meal. Mm -hmm. So currently she's doing two meals and she forces a protein shake in and sometimes still doesn't meet the 95 gram protein, uh, requirement goal. So question about protein and there's different research out there about how much protein you should be intaking. So if you're looking for lean body mass composition and overall health, 0.7 is probably enough to get you there, right? Mm -hmm. So one thing that is mistakenly done a lot in this realm is you're calculating your protein needs. And for some of you that don't track or even worry about this stuff, then just hang tight before we wrap up today's episode. Um, But you want to be looking at, you know, your end goal. So if your end goal is to weigh let's say 140 pounds, right? So multiplying that by 0.7 is going to get you about 98 grams of protein, which is this example or this question came in with 95 grams of protein. Yeah. So a chicken breast has about 43 grams. So if you're just eating now, for some of you might be like, oh man, eating two full chicken breasts in one meal, that seems like a lot. Okay, well then exactly do what she's done here and just space your window out a little bit to make sure you're getting what you feel is necessary for you. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you have to give yourself a little bit more uh, of an eating opportunity, you know, and it's like, um, that's not a reason to just have more food or like go to the pantry. Like it's not a reason to snack more. Right. But if, right. if you feel like there's, there's a potential, like a, a particular nutrient that you need more of, and you need a little bit more time to do that, that's okay. And, and, you know, maybe instead of doing, um, you know, 18 hour fast, now you go to a, a 20 hour fast and, you know, just, just keep, keep, keep the boundaries, um, to, to keep going towards your long-term goals. And, and what is, what is your long-term goal? Because if you're in a maintenance phase, um, versus a fat loss phase, then, then that can look very different too. Um, you have two different kinds of opportunities there to, to get in your nutrients. And then, and also if you just have a few pounds to lose and you want to do that through a couple of longer fasts, then, um, maybe putting that requirement aside for maybe a week or two is right is probably a, a good trade-off for, for hitting some more long-term goals. Right. And then, and then right. bring it back into the forefront. That's okay too. Yeah. Yeah. So the other, I, I love that consideration because there's the opposite. I want to come back to that. The opposite situation there would be, um, you know, putting in a longer fast one or two days a week mm-hmm. and just making sure you're getting your weekly average of protein consumption to a level yeah. that you're feel comfortable with. So yeah, you you'll you'll have maybe a, a day or two where you're you're not fasting or you're doing more of the the intermittent like she had mentioned and you have the ability to get two or three smaller meals in and a protein shake right so it's that consistent consumption of week to week which is going to give you the long term result so i love that point of maybe relaxing that just a little bit um and then just staying consistent over the weeks to months rather than that consistent need to hit that metric every single day. Yeah. Um, and even if you want to bump it up to, you know, one, if you're doing more um muscle building and you're working out doing weights five days a week, mm-hmm. then yeah, you might want to up that a little bit, but then also open your window up on those on those workout days, yeah. right? To give yourself a little bit of flexibility. So um, I know one of the other considerations here is that um, you can also do it off of lean body mass because fasting does have a growth hormone component or a spike to it. Mm-hmm. And um, it's, that is not anabolic, meaning muscle building, but it, it is lean muscle protective. Sure. Having elevated growth hormone muscles allows your body to get into fat burning. So um, even for someone like myself who has 170 plus pounds of lean muscle on their frame, you know, uh, getting that amount of protein in long-term being at that size, lifting all the weight that I used to lift, that just wasn't sustainable for me. Right. So I've been able to decrease my body weight, decrease my protein need and decrease, you know, the, the calculations of, Oh, how much do I need to get in? And eventually you'll just find kind of a, uh, a, a rhythm of, of consistency that's going to work for you. But if you're in a fat loss phase, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. Um, and if you hit five out of seven days, you're going to be perfectly fine. Yeah. The, yeah. The body doesn't, uh, doesn't freak out over like minute to minute or hour to hour right. it changes within those averages, you know, look, look at it, uh, zoom out just a little bit. Yep. I think yep. that's some great, great perspective. You're hitting, um, hitting some good goals and you're on the right track. So keep it up. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you for listening, Natalie. And at the end, she says, uh, by the way, loving your podcast, making my way through them as fast as possible. Well, slow down, Natalie, because <laughs> 
Right now, Tommy and I's bandwidth is about one episode a week. We're working on changing that. I know if you guys have been with us, you've been hearing us say that. Uh, we're thinking about doing interview series and expanding the breadth of what it is that we do because we love it. We live it. We talk about it 24-7. If you're new to the podcast, go to the website, check out the Fast Start Guide, the resources tab. We have an insulin assessment on there. Um, shoot us a question, info at thefastingforlife.com. Give us a follow on wherever you get your podcast. As always, Tommy, thank you for the conversation. Thank you all for listening, and we'll talk soon. Thank you. Bye. So you've heard today's episode and you may be wondering, where do I start? Head on over to thefastingforlife.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive fasting tips and strategies to maximize results and fit fasting into your day-to-day life. While you're there, download your free fast start guide to get started today. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to leave us a five-star review and we'll be back next week with another episode of Fasting for Life. Fasting for Life.